Hello all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. Bionicle is a universe that has always had a truly enormous range in the scale of its creatures and locations, from the microscopic protodytes at one end of the scale, to robots the size of planets on the other. We have touched on the larger end of this scale before on this channel, looking into the implications having such a gigantic robot could entail. However, as large as the GSR is, the planets upon which it walks must be orders of magnitudes larger than this in order to accommodate for its humongous size. From the fact that the GSR is canonically as tall as the diameter of the Earth, we know that Aqua Magna must be significantly larger than our planet in order for the GSR to fit on its surface. And that moon was itself a mere small fragment of the even larger planet of Spherus Magna. In this video, we are going to explore in full the truly enormous sizes of the three key bodies within the Spherus Magna system, Aqua Magna, Bara Magna, and Bota Magna. The question of the sizes of these bodies was actually one of the first things I ever investigated from Bionicle with a scientific lens, way before I even had the idea to start this channel. Some of you may even have seen it when I posted my work to various Bionicle fan sites back then. Looking back on it now though, I don't really feel happy with the methods I used at the time, and I think my measurements were too imprecise. So I reworked the investigation from the ground up for this video to make sure it was up to my current standards. As with any measurement of an unknown size that we make in these investigations, we first need to find an image of something with a known size and the thing we are wanting to measure side by side so that we can make a comparison. At the scale we are talking about here, the GSR is the best bet for our object of known size. The unknown objects are of course the moons of Aqua Magna and Bota Magna, as well as the planet of Bara Magna. However, finding an image of the GSR alongside one of these celestial bodies actually proved to be rather difficult. The best selection of images to use came from the Matanui Saga, which depicted the GSR, the planet and moons together in multiple images. However, any in which the full extent of the bodies could be seen also had the GSR far closer to the viewer than they were, meaning the perspective would render a direct comparison between them impractical. In order to get around this problem, we will need to perform some extra steps. This image of the GSR crashing onto Aqua Magna during the Great Cataclysm was what I ultimately settled on as the starting image for this investigation. While you cannot see the full extent of Aqua Magna in this image, you can see enough of it to get an idea of the curve of the planet. If we extrapolate that curve out into a full circle, then we can measure the diameter of that against the GSR within the image to get an answer for the size of Aqua Magna itself. Then, once we have that, we can use Aqua Magna as our new object of a known size in the other images of the Matanui Saga to determine the sizes of Bota Magna and Bara Magna. Due to the positioning of the GSR's body and the foreshortening of the legs caused by the perspective of this shot, we can't use the full height of the GSR as our measuring stick here. Instead, I selected this section of the GSR's forearm to use, due to the clarity of that part of the image and the lack of perspective distortion. Using this image of the full GSR and setting its height at the canonical 40 million feet, aka 12,192 kilometers, that means each pixel of this image represents about 15.36 kilometers in height. That section of the GSR's forearm is 66 pixels long here, meaning that it is 1,013.44 kilometers long at full scale. Going back to our image of the Great Cataclysm, that section of the GSR's arm is at 143 pixels in length, meaning that in this image a pixel equates to 7.09 kilometers. Measuring the diameter of our extrapolated Aqua Magna from earlier, we get a total of 8,770 pixels, meaning that the diameter of Aqua Magna is a whopping 62,152.98 kilometers. That is 4.9 times larger than the diameter of Earth at 12,756 kilometers. Not only is it larger than the Earth, it's even larger than two of the gas giants within our solar system, beating out Neptune at 49,244 kilometers and Uranus at 50,724 kilometers. And remember, this is just Aquamagna we are talking about here, the smallest of the three. 
Moving to this image from the Matanui Saga that shows all three bodies together, we can see that Aquamagna has a diameter of 44 pixels here. Botamagna is slightly larger with a diameter of 65 pixels, while Baramagna is far larger again with a diameter of 288 pixels. Dividing our 62,152.98 km diameter for Aquamagna by 44 pixels, we get a measure of 1,412.57 km per pixel for this image. That means at 65 pixels, Bota Magna has a diameter of 91,816.9 kilometers, making it 7.2 times the size of the Earth, or around 79% the size of Saturn. Bara Magna, meanwhile, has a diameter of a truly impressive 406,819.49 kilometers, making it 32 times larger than the Earth, or 2.9 times larger than Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. And remember, Jupiter is not a rocky terrestrial planet like Earth or indeed Bara Magna. Instead, it is a gas giant a planet with no discernible surface to speak of, just clouds of gas that increase in pressure the deeper you go and gaining bizarre properties as a result. In fact, of all of the planets discovered in our galaxy so far via space telescopes such as Kepler, planets anywhere near this size have been determined to be gas giants, with current theories of planetary formation suggesting that beyond a certain size, terrestrial planets like Earth simply can't form. Even one of the candidates for the largest planet ever discovered, ROXS42BB, is only estimated at 2.5 times the size of Jupiter, smaller than our 2.9 times the size for Bara Magna. As a quick note here, I'd like to point out that because of the way the shattering is depicted in this image, we can also use this Bara Magna diameter measure for the original planet of Spherus Magna, as it ignores the craters left by the shattering. For a bit of extra fun, I also calculated the surface area of Spherus Magna pre-shattering using this figure, which came out at 519 billion square kilometres, or 1,019 times larger than the surface area of the Earth. No wonder it took nearly 100,000 years for the Batterer to make their way south. Okay, so the Spherus Magna system at this scale is truly ridiculous. But what if we use something else as our initial ruler? In previous videos on this channel, we have compared the size of the GSR between the official canon size given by Greg Farshti and the smaller size given by Christian Faber in his concept art. In those videos, we saw how the smaller Faber size of the GSR gave us some still huge, but arguably more reasonable numbers to work with. So could it do the same here? Well, if we take the GSR to be the Christian Faber size of 3,150 kilometers tall and apply the same measurement process as explained before, then we get the following sizes for our three astronomical bodies. Aquamagna is reduced to 16,058 kilometers in diameter, about 1.3 times larger than the Earth. Motomagna's diameter becomes 23,722 kilometers, or around 1.9 times larger than the Earth. And Bara Magna gets the new figure of 105,108 kilometers, which is 8.2 times larger than the Earth, or around 87% the size of Saturn. Well, that's certainly better, but is it any closer to being realistic by the rules of planetary formation within our universe? No, we are still way off. Terrestrial planets significantly larger than the Earth are known as super-Earths to astronomers. In my research for this video, I found this paper by Eric Lopez and Jonathan Fortney, which proposed the upper limit definition of a super-Earth to have a radius of no more than 1.75 times that of the Earth and a mass of no more than 5 times that of the Earth. Any larger than that, and the planet would have too large a gravitational pull and would inevitably draw in gases around it and become a gas giant. So, with our Bara Magna size being 8.2 times larger than the Earth, that's still far too large to be realistic. In that case, let's do one more set of calculations to close out the video and tackle this from the other side. If we use this upper limit as our guide, can we construct a version of the Spherus Magna system that can still fit to one of the two GSR scales from Farshti or Faber? 
Given this upper limit, let's be safe and set Baromagna at being 1.7 times the size of the Earth, rather than the full 1.75. That makes it 21,685.2 kilometers in diameter. Going back to our reference image, at 288 pixels, that means we have 75.3 kilometers per pixel. At 65 pixels, that makes Bota Magna 4,894.23 kilometers in diameter, or around 1.41 times larger than our moon is at its 3,474.8 kilometers in diameter. But the key measure here is Aqua Magna. At 44 pixels in this image, that gives it a diameter of 3,313.02 kilometers, or around 95% the size of our moon. Given the sheer difference in size between this and the Canon GSR, we can safely say that the Farshti size is out of the running for our more realistic size range. But what about the Faber size? Well, at 3,150 kilometers tall, it is smaller than Aquamagna here, but only just. That being said, for a robot that winds up lying down on the surface of that moon, what really matters here is the moon's circumference rather than its diameter. To work out the circumference of Aqua Magna, we can use this equation, where the circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius. Plugging the radius of Aqua Magna in here, which, remember, is just half of the diameter, we get a circumference of 10,408.15 kilometers. That is about three times larger than the Faber size GSR is tall, meaning that when it crash landed on Aqua Magna's surface, the GSR would take up about one third of the circumference. A sizable chunk, to be sure, but one that is definitely still reasonable within the context of the Bionicle storyline. So I think this works out well. And it's another point in favour of my personal preference for the Faber size of the GSR over the Canon Farshti one. But what do you think? Which size of the Spherus Magna system do you like best? The humongous Canon size? The still gigantic Faber size? Or the slightly more realistic, Knowledge Tower approved size? It's ultimately up to your personal preference. While I may spend my time looking at Bionicle from a realistic angle, it's still fiction at the end of the day, where realism comes in second compared to cool storytelling. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I hope you join me again soon for another Bionicle Science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower.